Good morning. So here's the central idea behind this video. Who's in your top 10 list of best rappers or MCs? And do you have that one artist that doesn't fit in anywhere? You listen to other people's lists and it's a lot of the same, but do you have that one artist on your list that is special to you, but might not fit on anyone else's list? I do. And I'm, I'm confident in saying this. I don't think he's on anyone else's lists. You see, this guy got his start in 1991. He would play with some friends from high school and they, they formed little bands. And Oh, it's cute. Here's, here's a little band from Iowa, middle of nowhere. But they continued and they didn't give up. And in 1995, they started releasing records. And they got more and more popular. They gained some steam to the point they've won a Grammy for one of the best songs of the year. And they're touring still to this date. Every year they put on their own tour. I've seen them a couple times, and it's an amazing show. I, I can't recommend it enough. But recently, that artist, he was dissed by none other than MGK. And I didn't appreciate that. And I sat and stewed and pondered and thought, so here's what we're going to do, and what I've been working on all week. We're turning Alpha Omega into a banjo song. Welcome to channel yeah so we are tearing apart alpha omega um and part of the reason for doing this is we're making an album and in order to make an album we have to kind of learn the process of not only making beats but learning banjo learning learning some of the elements we're going to put in and i think this song is actually really perfect for it i listened to it a whole bunch and took out some of the elements i like and i'm going to be taking away some of the elements i don't like and addressing them in my own way now, diving into the song, we start off with an element. Wh whoever wrote this beat, um, this, this is genius. It's, it's so simple, and simplicity is key. This is a core element that that underlying piano is a core element to this song you hear it throughout the entire thing and it's kind of this it's a it's a thread it's your through line through the entire song i want to have that element in what i'm doing now the other two elements i really want to pull out are his flows in this song so we fast forward a little bit You'll hear. You'll hear his his rhythmic pattern. What he's speaking is in a triplet. So he goes one triple, two triple, three triple, four triple, one triple, two triple, three triple, four triple. I want to take that and put it as the music underneath. We're gonna do banjo, so we're gonna do a rolling style of triplets: one triple, two triple, three triple, four triple and then have that piano sitting on top. We're going to replicate what we're hearing with the voice with the instruments. Now, later on in the song. It sounds faster. So, so what happened? He's going to 16th notes. So we've gone from that one triple, two triple, three triple, four triple, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a... The, the snaps don't speed up, but... How you count it changes. So those are the two elements I'm going to play around with and have played around with. Um, and that's going to be what makes the music. We're going to do a beat switch, but keep the tempo the same within the song. We're going to do a triplet section where it's a rolling banjo. And then we're going to go to a 16th section still with a rolling banjo. And it works. I, I really can't wait to share with this. Um, Let's actually hop into the computer and kind of take a look at what we've got going on. This is the the current version of this project. Where do we start? We start with the piano bit. This is my iteration of that piano bit. Now I didn't want to copy note for note. I think I think that would be too close to the to the nail of what we have going on. But what I did do was kind of craft my own in the same style. really really basic and each of those falls on that one two three four which allows us space to do triplets or sixteenths so we get into the rolls that's this whole section here i i nailed that 
I don't, I don't care. I nailed that. It's gorgeous. And it's just a very simple chord. And I roll up and down on a, on a, on a piano. That's it. Now, those two together. Let's give a listen. Yeah, doesn't sound like Alpha and Omega, but the soul of it's there. Later on, around this section here, we switch up the, uh, the piano bit and we go to this. It's still very similar, and we actually took the the pattern of what the MIDI file was and then just kind of moved some things around, changed some of the tempos to make it fit with our 16th notes, which is here. I tried to bring a little bit more energy by not having everything on the uh, one, two, three, four. Together, sounding like this. That, that sounds so good. I'm really, really happy with that. If we come and this is, this is the cool part. This is where the beat switches. That, that is smooth as butter. Now, we've laid it out in roughly a song. It's, it's very simple. Oh, <laughs> little ADHD moment for you. You want to hear the intro? This, this is something cool. If you're a producer, let, let me in on your uh, little trick. This is that fast part slowed down in half. We've, we've stretched it out. So what would take four, four count it now takes eight. Beautiful sounding. We've also done that with the drums. So the drums are slowed and the uh, banjo is slowed. To bring it into the actual piece of music, here are our hi-hats. And you notice that the volume track is all the way down and slowly rises up. So we're gonna start hearing hi-hats come in, which will transition us into the song. I love doing this for an intro. It's like a mule. So if you're looking to make an intro, slow down your melody by half. Slow it in half and then take your hi-hats normal and just ramp them up in volume. Works so well. <sighs> now we got to talk about the, uh, the elephant in the room. All right. Elephant in the room time. So I like this song a lot. I like MGK's song a lot. But lyrically it leaves something for me to be desired and I've, I've been trying to figure out how to say this i i think there's a way to say that i am striving to be the best without sounding egotistical and there's there's a big bit of ego in this that i personally don't like i don't like to digest that kind of information when you tell me that you are the alpha and you are the omega mm -hmm. that that's reserved for god as a as a bible believing christian like no, 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 that, that's God. As humans, we try to elevate ourselves. We try to be as imitators of Christ. We try to be as close to God as possible, but we also have a sin nature that drags us down. We're, we're sinful creatures and we're doomed to a life of sin. Had it not been for Christ dying on the cross and forgiving us of that nature, we'd be doomed to hell. And I, it's very egotistical to use that language and say, I am now the Alpha, I am the Omega. And to, to erase the presence of God. Now, I, I get what he's doing lyrically, but maybe it was just, it was late at night and I was hearing it a little different. I didn't like it. And I want to, as I, as I play around with this and write lyrics, I want to talk about some of the struggles you go through and talk about 
this duality, this, this dual nature that you have going on. I think the best way to approach that is be very literal. I went through this. This is something that tore me down. This is something that left some scars on my life, but also get into some of that metaphorical sense. MGK did great with that. He, he talks about where he comes from and what makes him good. And then he, in a metaphorical sense, says, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. So I think we go metaphorical on the hook and we talk about, uh, in a sense of irony, how we are both things. We are both the person trying to create the best version of ourselves as well as the destroyer of who we are. We are, uh, we're the boat that can save and we are also the water that can drown. We are, I don't know, we're the target and we are the arrow. I think you can, you can dive into a metaphorical sense and then go, yeah, I'm both those things. And I, this is where I came from. I think that's going to hit a lot harder from a lyrical standpoint. And that's where I'm going to approach this. I really like this beat and I've got it out to three, four minutes. I have a rough shape in my head of where I want to go. And if it's far enough away... It should be on the album. If it's not far enough away, like make a music video for it, throw it on this thingy, and uh, yeah, then it's out in the world. So I think that's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on some lyrics with this, but we also have in the back burner working on an album. So I need to, I need to make like 10 more songs to make a full album. I don't, I don't want to do an EP. Or LP. I don't want to do the small version of an album where it's like five songs. I don't want to do that. I want to do. I want to do it prim and proper. We're doing everything in house, so let's take it to the extreme. Gas pedal on the floor. Let's go to ninety. I think that's the only way to do it. Am I wrong? I don't know. We'll find out. Bye.